Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Wednesday, March 29th, 2017 edition of VR News. A metric crap ton of stuff to talk about, especially given Samsung's unpacked event that they are holding today in New York City. Lots of stuff coming out of that. Uh, just in general terms, one of the most exciting for me, and we're going to get into the details of it later, is a new Oculus Home. We know we've had the same one for both Rift and Gear VR essentially since launch of both devices. It hasn't really changed. It's got that kind of quasi-Japanese motif with the floor pillows and the water. It is what it's always been. Well, until the update. All right, so let's get into the first of those news pieces. It has to do with the new Gear 360 and its 4K capture capability and 2K live streaming. So, yes, it is capable of 4K. The rumors for that substantiated very true, but there's a bit of a caveat to that. So, the 2560 resolution mode of the last model, that was 30 frames per second, is still there. It's supported. The new 4K isn't at 30 frames per second, which really strikes me as odd. It's at 24, which is the standard frame rate for the motion picture industry. It's not 30. Again, puzzles me a little bit. But we all had some cracks to make. Uh, you know, if we're going to talk about the design of this thing next, the bulbous handheld portion that some of you had some raunchy jokes for that cracked me up. But yes, uh, that is the final form factor design that they're going with. So it does look a little odd, but I think most people would agree what was even odder was trying to figure out a way without some kind of tripod mount to hold the old Gear 360, right? So this thing at least makes it a little bit more wieldy. Now, this next tidbit, really odd and kind of out of left field. Now, we know support-wise, it's going to support... Basically every single freaking phone that they announced today. And they announced a hell of a lot of phones. Not really VR. We're not going to get into that even indirectly. Let's just say there were a lot of announcements. One phone that they announced as being compatible with the Gear 360, however, isn't a Samsung phone. Hell, it's not even Android. It's the iPhone 7. That really shocked me. But kudos to them for making that compatible. That immediately, just by providing compatibility for the iPhone 7, increase their market potential for their 360 camera upgrade like nobody's business, like doubled it. Huge, huge, and kudos, props to Samsung for that. Now, the resolution, like I said, 3840 by 1920 uh, at 30 frames per second, that's still there. Spec-wise, some things that have changed, well, the recording time. You get 130 minutes at the 2560 by 1280, not the 4K. So the 2560 at 30 frames gets you just over two hours. The battery is an 1160 milliamp, so that makes sense given the fact that there's not a hell of a lot going on moving part-wise inside of this that such a small battery is going to be able to provide over two hours of support. Now, compatibility, like I said, essentially all of the Samsung phones, but the iPhone as well, and it's not just limited to 7. That's what they announced. But if you look at the full specification list, it's actually iPhone 6, the entire line, and 7, the entire line. So, yeah, again, kudos for them on that. They've retained water and dust proofing. Not huge, but if you're filming outside, probably pretty important especially where I live, which is uh, the rain, the rainy coast. All right, next Samsung news piece has to do with the new Gear VR that comes with that new controller. Let's dig into that one for a bit. So we have an availability date. April 21st is when it's going to formally launch. $129 US. If you're wondering, okay, Epix, what if... I don't want to upgrade. Can I still get the controller? 
And I'm going to answer that question because that was the exact same question I had because I had just bought my Gear VR last summer and definitely not cool about having to upgrade it already. Simple answer, you don't have to upgrade. You can actually buy this, the controller standalone. And what shocked me was the price, $39 US. Shocking as in good shocking. When you consider the price of a touch controller or hell, the Vive controller, just a single one, $39 looks pretty damn good. That's kind of the price of what you'd pay, you know, for a 360 Xbox 360 gamepad, for example, for the PC. The older one, albeit, but still in that price range. They've done nothing to fix the IPD. So the interpupillary distance is still the one they provide you with. That's the default. That's all you get. Now, it will provide motion tracking, this controller, but there's a bit of a caveat to that. So let's jump into that. So like the Daydream, like the Daydream VR controller, the Gear VR controller tracks via an onboard IMU, and that's the uh, gyroscope, the acceler accelerometer, and the magnetic sensor. So you do get motion track uh, tracking, but it's not one-to-one, -one, like what you get with the touch or the Vive. So just keep that in mind. It's pretty much like what you would get with the Daydream. Decent, good tracking, but definitely not close to perfect. Now, Older games that don't require a Bluetooth gamepad can be used with this, so that's good. So uh, if you were, you know, tapping on your helmet, your HMD to play games, you haven't been able to afford a gamepad, for example, you could afford this controller and be able to substitute for that because it still comes in, you know, if you compare it to like the Steel Series gamepad I had, it's still half the price, the controller, so not bad. Next up, still on the topic of Samsung, but now let's dig into the home revamp. So, Upload VR, they were interviewing Oculus staff at the event today and got this nugget they, and actually got to try it out, a software project that Carmack himself was involved in for Oculus Home is basically going to be able to deliver to you twice the pixel resolution. Now, these aren't true pixels, but the results apparently are amazing, stunning, according to those who've tried it. And Upload VR was just one of them, but there were several that several different organizations that were there that all vouched it is absolutely stunning. And essentially what it is, and I'm going to describe this or rather let Max Cohen, he's one of the uh, Oculus engineers that were there, how he explained the rendering difference is as follows. So he said before the update, the eye buffers rendered 1024 by 1024. And because of the way it was rendered on the screen, you were looking at somewhere in the order of 400 pixels vertically. So top to bottom, 400 pixels. Now, with the new version, you're looking on the order of about 600 pixels. So it's basically one and a half times and one and a half times improvement, which when you factor in, you know, the entire set of differences, it's effectively twice as good. And according to Oculus themselves, a message that they put out for exactly this function, they said the Increased image clarity is made possible by a native rewrite and cylindrical layers. Now, they don't ex explain what the hell that last part means, but obviously the first part is referring to Carmax code. So, then what they do basically is the layers warp the native image on your phone screen in a slightly different manner than they used to, to better utilize the pixels. Now, Carmack himself describes the difference as going from standard definition to high definition. And again, as far as I can tell, obviously there's a part of me that's skeptical until I try it myself or hear from some of you, but according to all those who tried it, it certainly lived up to that. So, very cool. In fact, this is what the Upload VR 
writer said. He said, I was astonished by how dramatic the improvement was. The new Oculus Home on Gear VR is the best looking thing I have ever seen inside of any headset. And here's where it gets good, guys. It even puts its older brother Rift to shame. For the first time in VR, I could read text clearly without straining my eyes. That alone is a huge milestone for this technology. Now, what they didn't elaborate on is whether that software works for the older one, because they kind of say it puts its older brother Rift to shame, but they could just be talking about the offering of home that was always on that unit. Uh, my gut tells me it should be backwards compatible. If it's truly just a software coding implementation, it should work. Very excited about that, as you can tell. All right, next up. Probably about uh, four or five weeks ago, I mentioned the IMAX VR centers and the pilot that they were going to start in January, and it was actually probably more like 10 weeks ago, that they were going to start the pilot project at the IMAX in Los Angeles. Well, not only did they do that, but they kept records of how many admissions and they basically let Upload VR know that they had 15,000 admissions since January 6th. Now, your first kind of guess would be, okay, wow, 15,000 people tried it out. But the way they're counting it, and Upload asked this question, is if a person wanted three experiences on a given day, those three tickets counted towards that 15,000 total. So it could be a lot, it could be half of that maybe in actual users, but still pretty good. And based on ticket prices of seven to 10 bucks, Upload, you know, estimates $100,000 in ticket sales since January. Now, not too shabby. That's just at the outset. Hopefully that picks up more momentum as better offerings are made available in that IMAX center, but very, very cool. Next news story, Oculus Studios launching a Ghost in the Shell VR experience this week. Now, of course, that's gonna coincide with the release of the movie, uh, which I gotta admit, I'm you know, curious about being kind of a fan of the original material. So let's see what they do with that. But the experience, according to Oculus, is not just any old 360 video. And this is Oculus Studios themselves building this. This is a new project. So from the ground up, created as a collaboration between Production Studios Rewind, Here Be Dragons, and of course, Paramount and DreamWorks on the film industry side. So there's a 360 teaser video below, but that in no way amounts to what the final is going to offer quality wise. So uh, March 29th, this Friday is when you can expect that. Of course, that's going to be game and Friday, but uh, really curious about this. Probably going to try it. It'll be nice to actually get some footage on Gear VR. It's been a long time. All right. Next story, Windows 10 mixed reality support arriving next month. Now, this is, of course, aimed at the Acer mixed reality headsets that we saw a couple of months ago that we know aren't going to be released until the end of the year. So you might think, what's the point of releasing these updates now? Well, it's kind of twofold. To understand the second reason, you got to understand the first. And the first is those Acer HMDs are available to developers. So those developers will be able to use those updates to the operating system, in effect, almost working as beta testers. So by the time it's available for regular consumers come the holiday season, most of the bugs should be stamped out by then, at least you would think. Next up, how to use the HTC Vive tracker without a Vive headset. And I had mentioned the other day, that's why I thought it was important to put this up, that you needed the HMD, because that was kind of the, the common speculation that you were going to require it. It was written everywhere. Not the case, but it does require a bit of a workaround slash kind of hack methodology to get it to work. Installing a bunch of software, I'll link to it, you can check it out. But at the end of all of that, 
they do live up to the claim. You don't need it. What you do need is Python programming language, Python OpenVR, OpenVR, at least one Vive controller and one base station, and then you can make it work. So very cool. If you're technical or developer, hardware guy, you're interested in that, check out the link. Next story, NVIDIA to present their latest foveated rendering enhancements and advancements that they've made since the updates we've seen in VR software. So they say they've made quite a few improvements that will start to get rolled out in staggered fashion for those of us with the big HMDs. Now, that's going to take place in May. They will make those announcements. No date given in terms of what day in May, just that it's going to be May of this year. So at least we have that to look forward to in a couple of months. And the last story, guys, Vive Tracker juggling to demonstrate performance. Now, it's one thing to say, you know, your trackers benefit from extremely accurate Vive base station tracking. Great. It's another thing for a customer to call you on it, but not only call you on it, but juggle these expensive trackers essentially like they're balls. And that's exactly what Steve Bowler, co-founder of CloudGate Studios did. He filmed himself. It's about an 18 second clip. I'm gonna see about picture in picturing it uh, up in the corner there. But like I said, about 18 seconds of him juggling, doing a pretty damn decent job then of course he has to stop and thankfully none of them well i won't spoil it you'll see check that out and uh yeah you'll get a good idea of how accurate these damn things are if you can juggle them with the hmd on your head that's pretty damn good latency and tracking capability all right guys that is it for wednesday's news as you can tell i'm pretty stoked really excited i've got some uh Cool things to do tonight. More on that another time. Guys, hopefully, terrific hump day y'all had. We are getting closer to Friday by the day. Cheers.